a few weeks ago, I went on vacation in Europe. And wandering around Rome the first day, we heard a faint buzzing coming from the umbrella pines. But when we got a little bit out of the city to Ostia Antica, that buzzing became overwhelming. Listen. Upon closer inspection of the trees, we found exoskeletons clinging to the bark, and the combination of a buzzing up above and those exoskeletons holding onto the trees led me to one exciting conclusion. Cicadas. Now I didn't actually get to see any cicadas as they were too high up in the trees above me, but after the dud of a cicada season that the East Coast experienced this year, just standing underneath them and looking at their abandoned skeletons on the trees was exciting enough for me. So I've been completely fascinated with cicadas all summer based on the tales of the brood two 17 year cicadas that were popping up along the East Coast. These cicadas spend most of their lives underground as nymphs, sucking on tree roots, sucking all the juice out of them. And then after about 17 years, they burrow up above, come out, emerge, they emerge from their exoskeletons, they leave them behind, they become fully grown adult cicadas, and then they go on to do the one thing they've got in mind, find a mate. After they mate, the females lay eggs in twigs and then they die. And then after about six to 10 weeks, those eggs hatch, the nymphs fall to the ground, they burrow down, and the whole cycle starts again. Now tons of people have talked about cicadas in the past months and because I didn't get to actually see any cicadas, I'll leave that discussion to them. I'll put a bunch of links in the doobly-doo. There's a great one from Radiolab and they talk about all the different sort of songs that the cicadas make. So you can check those out below if you want to know more about cicadas. But what I did get to see were the exoskeletons. So that's what I want to talk about. Now cicadas have an exoskeleton because they are an arthropod. Now imagine that you are an organism and you have this tough outer shell and you want to grow bigger, but you can't because you're confined by the shell. You got to get out of that shell. So arthropods do this in a process known as molting. Now my favorite arthropod is also one of my favorite marine animals, the lobster. Now the lobster has come up on these videos before and that's because it's super cool. So when a lobster wants to get bigger, it has to shed its shell. So what it does is it grows a new soft shell inside and then it splits apart between the carapace and the tail. So right sort of in the center of its body. It actually pulls right out the back and it leaves that old hard shell behind all in one piece. Then it'll take about three to four weeks for its new soft shell to harden up again. And what it actually does, it's kind of cool, is that it will often eat its old shell to reclaim some of the nutrients from it so that it can harden up its new shell even faster. Because if you think about a lobster, like a soft shelled lobster, just hanging out in the ocean, it's going to be really vulnerable. So it wants to harden up as quickly as possible. So it'll hide for those three to four weeks. It'll eat its old shell and it'll harden up. And this happens with, you know, a lot of different animals. If you think about soft shell crabs, well, soft shell crabs are taken right after they've molted. And on the cicada exoskeletons I found, you could even see the hole in the back where the cicada emerged. And I thought that was super cool. So this was just a fun sciencey thing I found in my travels over the summer. So I hope that you remember as your summer continues and you do some traveling, maybe some fun things, to always go forth and do science. I moved home for a month before I moved to California and my parents live really close to an airport. I bet you couldn't tell.